I'm here in Peru, Vermont, at Horses for Hire, a riding stable with beautiful horses that do mountain trails. But the big surprise is we have two artists and craftspeople, Deborah Hodes and Jean Morrison. Hi, Jean. I'm Mary Jo. Hi, Mary Jo. So nice, nice to meet you. Meet you. And nice. I am fascinated by your woodwork, almost Hobbit-like. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I was going to call them, Hobbit boxes. Oh, but, really? Yeah, Deb said, no, they're keepsake boxes. No, they are keepsake boxes because they're they're very serious art and they're quite beautiful, quite beautiful. Tell me about them. How'd you get into this? Well, I've been a woodworker my whole life. Uh, built houses, stores and malls, all sorts of things. And wow. Then I retired and... In Vermont. I'm like from Vermont originally, in Jamaica, actually, about 20 miles down the road. Oh, so you're back home. <laughs> yep. And uh, I just, I have to keep busy. And I like messing around with wood. And this is what I do. Okay. So you went from building houses, malls, superstructures, to these little miniatures. Yeah, pretty much. Yep. That's, it's fascinating. Now tell me, when you get a piece of wood, how do you decide what it's going to become? Well, it pretty much has to tell you. you know, I, I, I have a whole shelf full of these things downstairs, and I look at them all the time. And, and you just uh, communicate with them? Eventually, they tell me what they want to be. So, Gene, do you use wood like this that you harvest, or do you use milled wood? Well. I use mostly wood like th that I harvest like this, but this particular box is milled wood. See the different layers? Yes, yes, I do. This, yeah, you know, this is cherry wood. Oh, that's beautiful. You know, black cherry, yeah. And uh, so I do both, but I prefer like that. But pieces like that are really and, hard to find. Okay, and why do you prefer a piece like Just this? Just because it, it's wild. It's <laughs> live edge. It's everything natural that you could ask for. I and mean, what kind of wood is oh, this? That rock maple. Gorgeous. And did you Sugar get that maple. here on your property? Actually, it came from about 300 yards up the road. Wow. A, a friend of mine uh, bought property there, and he's building a house. And he, when he cleared the land, I went up and scavenged around. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. So when, this, when you first got this piece, what did it look like? Was it a block? Was it shaped like this already, or? Uh, well, that was a natural edge. It, it was, you know, it was all bark and whatever, but I pretty much knew what was under there. So but, you can just look at it and know that it's yeah. a treasure. I've been messing with wood for 65 years. How did it, you get started in woodworking? Uh, it was more fun than going to high school. <laughs> You didn't do industrial arts in high school? No, I you didn't. Just, you <laughs> s so you're self-taught? <laughs> well, I, I'm taught by a lot of real old masters that okay. aren't around anymore. Right. And uh, that was lucky. Yes, that's part of Vermont history, though, the, the masters, the craftsmen who have come up through the ranks. And you're right, they are few and far between now. So you were very lucky to, to make those liaisons. Yep. Um, and did they teach you how to speak to the wood? and? How mm. to draw out its mm. its content? No, that's, that's just a either natural. Either have talent. that or you don't. Okay. Like playing music, I guess you know whatever. I, are uh, you self-taught in music as well? Pretty much, yeah, with with a book. Okay. Uh, okay. And just friends and watching other people. Okay, so everything's very organic mm. and very natural. Okay, so when you are working on wood, what kind of tools are you using? The bandsaw is the main tool. You know that. See, this is a piece in progress. This is a piece of white ash that's unfortunately disappearing because of a moth. Right, right. And uh, I am 80. What was the question? <laughs> um, I, s <laughs> I forget the question. <laughs> um, I said, what kind of tools do you use? Oh, you said okay. the bandsaw, and you were saying the, this was a work in progress and, uh, process. And it belt sanders, all sorts of sanders, and a little, I have a power carve I use, to, just a lot of different tools. Okay, so tell me, now I notice you're wearing special glasses, because I think you have limited eyesight, did you tell me? Yeah, I'm okay. legally blind, actually. You are, and yet, you can use 
what I consider dangerous tools and create these beautiful pieces of art without harming yourself? So far. So far. <laughs> and you have no intention of stopping, huh? <laughs> no, I, okay. no, no. I think stopping is a can become permanent real quickly. I hear you, I hear you. So fortunately today you haven't hurt yourself with any of the tools, but do you have to make special accommodations as you're working with the wood because of your eyesight? Well, uh, I could make a real long story out of this. Anyway, I may try to shorten it. My, when I was 14 months old and my brother was three years old, he cut my finger off with a hatchet. Oh my goodness, yes he did. And, and ever since then I have known that I can't spare anymore, so I'm incredibly <laughs> careful. <laughs> okay, and, and that's uh, a constant reminder to you. Yeah, and there, there are ba really basic safety rules with power tools. If you follow them, it's safe. So you don't have and, to do any extraordinary measures? just well, as No, and the, the Veterans Administration has been really good to me as far as helping with magnification devices. Oh, and okay whatever so okay yeah it uh and i you just get i get close to what i'm doing and go slow mm -hmm. well, well and i can imagine after a, a lifetime of woodworking that you're very comfortable with the materials and the tools and as you said yep. if you go slowly and carefully yep. um how do you make those tools create art like you cut out the little drawer holes and you put the, the curbs in the wood. Are, are the curbs naturally there or is that something nope, that, that you... I do that with the saw. You do? Yep. That's what, it, that's what it's made for, is to make these strange cuts. There's like these inside curves and whatever. That's all done with the bandsaw. Now how do you distribute your... Um, boxes? Um, I've been to a couple of craft fairs in the farmer's market in London there a couple of times. And Very nice. I had I have to start early and have more information than I had to get bots at places like that. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, you have to plan ahead for those. Yeah, so um, but next, I, oh, I'm sorry. I bet you love that because um, you're a real Vermonter and you like to talk with folks. and. I like to talk about these. Other than that, I'm not all that much into talking to people. <laughs> <laughs> and what is what is special that makes you want to talk about these? I, well, I just I love wood. I mean, and other people seem to like it too. So if we have something in common. They are. They're instantly. enchanting. They're yeah. absolutely enchanting. So, Jean, I mean, you seem to have a spiritual connection to the wood, and you know, you've gone from an industrial woodworker, house builder, whatever, to a real craftsman, perhaps even an artist. What do you think the difference is between craft and art? Hmm. Anybody can be a craftsman, I guess. Okay. And the artist? You either have it or you don't. It just, it's, it's, it's an inner... Yeah. The like, same thing with being a woodworker or any tradesman. There are some people that just, you know, when you meet them, they're going to excel. Mm -hmm. And some don't. Some are adequate, but they're no, they're, they just aren't top shelf. Okay, okay. Hi, Deb. It's Mary Jo. So good to see you. Nice to see you. How are you today? I'm great. And this is your studio? It is. It's just beautiful. And what are you working on? I'm working on a barn. And is it your barn? It looks like my barn. Mine has a hole in it, just like that. <laughs> Yep. And so do you paint all of the natural scenes that you see around you here? I do. And uh, most of the things are, you know, things I've done or places I've been. Okay. And yeah. when did you start painting? When I was young, I started. Um, Mr. Monroe in Arlo Monroe uh, taught me uh, some uh, painting when I was in high school. Okay. And I've dabbled with it ever since. And did you draw pictures as a child? And yes. Okay, yes. so you always had this artistic draw. Yes, my mother too. Oh, oh interesting. Yes. So it runs in the family. Yep. Now, did your mother paint uh, pictures like yours? Murals. Murals. And yep. how did you choose natural scenes in, in almost kind of a folksy way? Yeah, I'm a folk artist. That's what I, I consider myself. And, okay. Um, it's mostly things from around here or places I've been. A lot of winter scenes. Uh, I like sliding. 
Okay. <laughs> There's and, a lot of sleds. And as you were learning art and expressing yourself, how did you choose folk art as your favorite medium and source of communication? I, I was always drawn to it. Okay. It yeah. just it, it speaks to you yeah. and it, it draws you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And how do you feel when you create a picture? Um, pretty good most of the time. Okay. Yeah. Does it draw a lot of emotional? Uh, Some of them. Yeah. Yes. Yes. I like that one up there. I'm pretty fond of with the little girl and the pony. Oh yes. Yeah. And is that Earl? Your yeah, doll girl. That's Earl. <laughs> yep. Okay. That's Earl. And those those that you become fond of seem to draw emotionally from you. Yes. Okay. Yep. And when you come here to paint, how do you feel while you're painting? Uh, relaxed. Relaxed? Yes, I find it very relaxing. Okay. okay. De-stressing. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I know you have so much going on here with you, with Jean, your husband, being a musician and a woodworker, and you with the, you do what, put up preserves and vegetables. You've got an organic vegetable market, so I guess you do need to relax every once in a while. Yes. <laughs> yes. Sometimes it's in the middle of the night. Oh, really? I get the urge to come okay. out here and paint. And tell me about that urge. Just, I don't know, I just feel like I have to put something down. I have an idea. Okay, and it just comes to you and yes. it just, it needs to be expressed then. Yes. That's wonderful, yeah. that's wonderful. Yeah. And sometimes I start working on them and they just don't feel right. And I'll just put them away, put them over there on the wall for a while. And then I'll walk out and I'll say, it needs this. This one needs a fence. And you just know that yes. in, intuitively, you know that was the missing element. Yeah. Okay. Do you see these pictures in your mind? Yes. Okay. Fascinating. And as you were learning the art of painting, how did your technique develop over the years? Um, I don't know. I mean, I just went from crayons to paint. <laughs> and that did you really ever take formal lessons no. other than in school? No. Okay. No. So just a natural ability. Well, it's fascinating, and I think it's great that you have this attached to your house so that when you do get the urge, you can express it, mm -hmm. and um, that must be very satisfying. Yep. Yeah, it gives me my space. Mm -hmm. Well, that's one thing I wanted to ask you. How is it two crafts artisans living together in the same space? Do you well, find you get in each other's way, or mm -hmm. do you enhance each other's abilities? Um, no, he has his wood shop in the basement, and I have my little spot here. Okay. And then every once in a while, he will ask me to paint on his... Uh, boxes. Okay, so there yeah. is that collaboration. So there is a collaboration. Okay. Yeah. And does he ever get give you ideas for paintings? Oh yes. And and how about you? Vice versa, do you give him idea for boxes or? Uh, sometimes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 I did give him an idea for a horseshoe box recently. Oh, interesting. And it okay. Came, yeah, it was a gift. It came out quite nice. Lovely, yeah. lovely. Yeah. And so you have this little, it's almost like a city here, <laughs> between the, the horses for hire, the, you know, the baking, the, the vegetables, the music that Eugene makes, the woodworking and the painting. Do you ever leave? No. <laughs> Everybody comes to you? Yes. That's marvelous. That's yes. marvelous. We, we rarely leave. Okay. Now, do you sell your paintings? I do. And, and how do you do that? Uh, mostly online. Okay. Face, Facebook most of the time. Okay. Or right here. People come right here to the gallery and pick out what they want. There's actually three or four of these are sold. Okay. So you really don't have to do much advertising? I haven't, yeah. Okay. No. no and do you do craft fairs or markets like Jean does? No. Nope. No, nope. it's just, just all word of mouth yep. and, and, and sight when seen, I want it. Mm -hmm. Fascinating, fascinating. It really is lovely work. Thank you. This is a series. The, I have two of them. I have two more I'm going to paint where the gentleman gets bucked off the horse. That's very cute. Chasing the horse. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, it'll be a series of four when it's done. And how did you get the idea for that? Um, it's just all the things that have happened to me. Oh. <laughs> so you've been bucked off a horse oh, once yes. or twice? I've chased, <laughs> I've chased after him down the road. Yeah, and right here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, come back here. <laughs> they, they're not like dogs, though, right? No. <laughs> so tell me, Deborah, um, as you practice these things, how do you make the distinction between craft and art? I don't know. I mean, I don't think... I think of craft as something that you, uh, like, build with your hands. Okay. 
versus this is painting, which is more art, I think. Okay. And I don't know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we ask all the artisans that because uh -huh. nobody really does have the, the answer, yeah. but everybody has interesting answers. Uh -huh. And so you feel that your painting is an artistic expression mm -hmm. of your vision. Um, so you're an artist. I guess so. <laughs> I didn't know. <laughs>